Listeners be advised. The Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Please remain seated until oxygen is fully depleted. Please remain seated until oxygen is fully depleted. Please remain seated until oxygen is fully depleted. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holy Liquid Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, you know, sometimes things come up and you just need to vent. You just need to go ahead and let all that angst, that anger, and all this, the BS out as much as you need to so that you can feel satisfied. And that's the purpose of this episode. This is a releasing the load episode. Now, I, y'all might not get too many of these because this is a, a special kind of episode. Typically, it's a bonus episode, but hey, I'm doing some things a little bit different for everybody, and I have some transitions coming up for uh, next year, so we're just trying to make sure everything's balanced. So, today we're releasing a load as we talk about reality TV shows and love, well, reality TV love-finding shows. So, that's like the, what is it, the love is blinds and all those other things Mm -hmm. that's out there. But, with me is Sharita. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I remember when we sat and was coming up with this episode, um, I know you were ready to go off. Actually, I think you were already going off based off of something that we were discussing in a completely different um, section. And I was like, bitch, I have a section, a segment that's right right for this is the releasing load let me go ahead and put that down and we'll talk about that when we get to the actual episode and I know you had a lot a lot of things you needed to say I know reality tv in general we both got a lot to say about that but then you have those shows that focus on finding love so how do you feel about them good I think the thing we were well annoying but I think the thing we were talking about that uh geared towards this was we were talking about on if correct me if I'm wrong we're talking about online dating and I think we were talking about how like African-American females are kind of lower on that totem pole when they did like the the okay stupid um like who are the least attractive gender and race. And we were talking about African-American women and Asian males. And just the difficulty of like dating in general, I think that that was what started this kind of conversation about the online, mm-hmm. um, the um, reality shows and things of that nature. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> um, and so I think to piggyback off of that, it's really frustrating to me. Because, I, I mean, I feel like, I mean, people aren't really finding love on this. Like, I mean, maybe one out of, like, <laughs> maybe one out of, like, 50 are actually finding love. Like, I think the first love is blind, the Hamiltons. I guess they, they're still together. So maybe um, that was something. But I think it's more just about, like, lust and aesthetics. And this like illusion of love and the frustrating part about it is like you always see kind of the same body type right you're not seeing like anybody who's plus size for real and even the ones that are plus size they're like 
a size 11 or like a size 10, which is really not plus size, right? They just maybe have a little bit bigger hips. But even with that, they have the smaller belly, just the bigger hips, like the Ashley Graham kind of aesthetic. Um, you're not seeing anyone with different types of disabilities. You're not seeing anyone with like, these, you know, just different things, right? What normal people deal with on a regular basis when it comes to dating, uh, you're, they're not discussing any of that, right? It's just yeah. this like illusion. Um, and I guess that's what, I mean, and I get it, right? Because it's like, I read this article about it, about basically how um, people like, the creators are afraid to put people who are plus size or afraid to put people who don't fit this like norm because they know they're going to get voted out earlier or they're going to um they're going to get really bad ratings on that person mm. and they don't want it it feels like you're making fun of that person and I get that but if you continue to not show that then you'll then that just puts people who in real life are dating and don't fit these norms. It makes them feel bad. It shames them in some capacity. Mm. Right. And so <laughs> I don't know, it's frustrating and I don't like it. And then even just the way that they talk about like STIs, like they never have a conversation about them, but all these people like love Island, all of them are just like hooking up with each other. Right. Like that's just mm. never a part of the conversation. Um, so anyway, that's my little TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's going to go a lot deeper than the TED talk on this one, but I, <laughs> I'm with you most definitely when it comes to the different body types and uh, even the lack of, um, anyone who has some kind of disability and how those can like be, um, the invisible as well as the visible disabilities. Like there's none of those kind of conversations or um, those types of um, love finding shows available to people to recognize that, oh, I can have somebody too. And like most with the plus size uh, situation, if you know that there's going to be backlash about it, do it anyways. This is a great time to have those conversations to highlight whenever someone is being prejudicial towards somebody because of their body, set, uh, body size and uh, portraying fat phobia or whatever um, else you want to um, label it as in terms of being against plus size people make that known let it let's talk let's talk about the cancer that's in the room let's talk about the thing let's make these people who feel these type of way understand that hey that just because you feel as though this person's um, body type is not beautiful that doesn't mean that they're not like whenever i used to go online and see people like dragging Lizzo over something basic talking about she's unfit and all this other stuff I'm like none of y'all are her doctor none of y'all are uh, like can you go on top of a motherfucking stage and twerk while doing a damn uh, flute routine like can you do that yourself and still perform the entire show oh you can't so shut the fuck up that's fitness, okay? If you can't do that, then you are not fit, okay? Granted, I can't do that, but you know, I can do a little bit of other things that can make me fit. But, like, come on. I mean, I Let's... gotta ask my family to make me fit. That's the, that's the thing, though. <laughs> you don't know anyone's life. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, want, I want people to be able to engage in this conversation in an honest way, rather than co continue to shut up um plus size people like they do all the time when it comes to talking about these issues like i remember a couple months ago it might have been a couple weeks ago they finally put out some um research that proved that just because you're plus size does not mean that you're unhealthy like now we want to talk about this but at the same time you're not having anybody coming on to like um broader media like doing a media media uh, run to educate people of this information to be, to acknowledge that BMI does not really mean anything <laughs> like to right. actually um, talk about the difference between like if you are happen to be obese that is you have to be person specific to understand exactly how healthy this person is like we're not having those conversations but yeah the report was done that's great and all but let's start the conversations let's start having these conversations no i i agree or you don't know what people's bodies are doing right like <laughs> i can eat healthy 
a day. But if I have a hormone disorder or if I have this, that, and the third, it, it doesn't matter, right? Like I can be healthy and that's just my body is is doing what my body is doing. It's keeping me alive, but it's also keeping on to weight because of whatever hormone issue that I'm having. So you can't make this assumption just because, oh, well, like Lizzo, well, that's the one that we talk about the most, but she's a vegetarian. She, you, she see, you see her eating healthy on most of her TikToks. Obviously she's fit. She works out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But her body is a bigger body. And you can't just look at her and be like, oh, well, she's just lying on TikTok about what she eats. She actually, I'm sure she eats hamburgers and all this other stuff. And you're just like, how do you make this assumption about somebody you don't know anything about? Mm-hmm. Yet, you know, so-and-so who's skinny as heck eats nothing but McDonald's and you're not looking at them that same way that you're looking at her with the same kind of disdain, mm. right? It's just ridiculousness. And I, I would love to have a reality love show where you get to experience, like, if you want to have, if you, like, I feel like shows who make that statement that they don't want that backlash are just making an excuse so that they don't have to do more work. Because yeah. if you really wanted to show that people can uh, love it, uh, differently able people as well as um, people of different sizes, you can curate that space. You can create that. You can um, talk to a a variety of different people and see what they're attracted to, what they're open to, um, what their prejudices are, what their preferences are, and build a show to go off of that and show that, oh, look, we have a bunch of people. We have a lot of people who um, like this body type, that body type, or what have you. It's all about finding that true connection at this point. Is all about figuring out who loves who and how they can develop from that. And uh, shows just don't want to do it and the thing is when you think about like the pioneer shows like real flavor the flavor of love or a real chance of love like those main like those really big pioneer shows for these types of things I'm not talking about the bachelorette no mm-hmm. that but the black shows <laughs> um <laughs> they had that they had those different body types and yeah some of it was for laughs and giggles and i get that but they did they show cast all different types of bodies and all different types mm-hmm. of things and then it became like as you just kind of progress and you watch like love is blind or you watch love island or all these other new or the ultimatum and things of that nature now they're all back to these like very white centered body types. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. just kind of progress and you watch like love is blind or you watch love island or all these other new or the ultimatum and things of that nature now they're all back to these like very white centered body types that's Mm -hmm. really what i get from it very white centered Mm -hmm. oh i'm glad that you made that comparison because oh my god the people on flavor of love i remember seeing the 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 diversity there and i'm like all of these women are beautiful they are 
gorgeous women, regardless of what their body size is. You, uh, you can have very bony women to very thick and voluptuous and fat, I guess, women. And all of them are so fucking beautiful in their own way, but they're beautiful still, regardless. And I love to see that. And now whenever I look at uh, a TV, like, with, with Flavor of Love spe- specifically, the love was seem very attainable it seems like somebody Mm -hmm. i see whenever i go to the grocery store someone that i see when i go outside someone that i might see when i go to the club or what have you now these shows are just nothing but fantasy like i'm not going to see anybody that's on this show out in public i get that yeah they lived in these areas like chicago atlanta wherever they recruit these people from that's great and all but I'm not seeing these people on a regular basis. Yeah, I know some fine ass people that's in this city that I'm in, but at the same time, no, they're not. They're not living this uh, this luxurious um, like lifestyle in the sense that oh, I'm an engineer, I'm this, that, and the third, I'm a social media influencer, and all these other things, I'm, I have the six pack, I have my life together, I all these things, no. What I see is regular motherfuckers. And what I see on the TV, on Love is Blind and all these other shows, they're, they're good to look at, but they're also unattainable. Because um, because of now that they have this uh, show on, on, on their shoulders, on their backs, now they're going to have this little this ego about them too. And I'm like, I'm not even going to engage with it. Even if I see them in public, why bother? Like, I I want people that look as though, even if they are like, they look like they can be on the cast. I want somebody who um, can have, who has that mellow mindset about themselves, who know that they're beautiful, who knows that they uh, still have work that they have to do on themselves. Like, that's attainable. But what you see on these shows and how they curate their stories and all this other stuff, I don't want those things. And I think a lot of people fool themselves in believing that, oh, there's a potential for me to have something just like that whenever I go outside because they popularize that. Like, well, how many people you know that's um, trying to build their social media presence and they're struggling like hell? Like, <laughs> right. what are we doing? And the thing is, like, a lot of these people, like, you actually listen to their, like, intros and stuff i haven't listened to any recent ones but the ones that i it's like y'all didn't struggle dating why are you on the show it's not like you struggle to to date like mm-hmm. y'all talk about oh i just want to find my person but i i like they have no issues with dating they've dated multiple people this that and the third so it's just kind of like why are we on the show like you're not even you're you're taking up space for people who actually want to date and meet people. Because like, when you end all of it and you're at the reunion, none of the people end up, end up staying with each other. Because mm-hmm. they have all these other options now or they break up for whatever odd reason. And it's just like, so you just wasted time just to waste time just to be on the TV. Because this is what it seems like. You're just mm. trying to become popular and be a media sensation and not exactly. really be about any of this. I I I know that um there's a lot of trash out here because look the the dating pool is shit it's just it's just full of shit it's nothing but shit out there like it's it's nasty out here but like I know that the dating pool is trash and everything but even with extremely beautiful uh super attractive people I know that they may have people always reaching out to them and all this other stuff and you know the things I get that but you don't have to go to a show to actually find the love if you truly want the love because I know if you wanted sex you find sex you get sex so if you actually want love you can get it if you actually want it give this opportunity for people who like I would love for the shows to actually look for those people who are not just trying to be the next sensation, not trying to be out here um, to 
like in, increase their following um, or their notoriety by being on this dating show. And I will say in the uh, fairness of Love is, Love is Blind, I don't necessarily get that many of the people on there are on there to get notoriety. However, there are those who are. So it's like a mixed bag yeah. of motherfuckers. <laughs> so some of them really do want to find love and they get like bamboozled. But at the same time, when you get to the reunion part and you hear them talking about their experiences afterwards, I'm like, so from the things that you learned on the show, are you utilizing that to find somebody that's more... Um, you know, appropriate for you? Like, why is it that you have to continue to date somebody that's from that show, even though it might not be the same person that you originally decided to date, but why is it within that same circle? Like, what's preventing you from going beyond that to find somebody that suits you? Like, yeah, we've seen the show, we've seen how bad that your date or your person happened to be, but what's preventing you from truly finding love outside of that? Right. And I think if, 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 it might actually be great to have one of those shows to actually have a therapist on there too, right? Mm. So you're doing that. I'm doing that self-work because if, if it's about really about finding love, because there's going to be people who are going to be on the show just to be on the show or to be a jerk. Like even with the last, I think Love is Blind, that one guy who was like a complete jerk to like that plus size girl. I forgot his name. Um, but there are some people who are on there to actually find love. And if that's the case, when it comes to finding love, you want to be really self-aware with yourself, learning things that you need to, to work on. So wouldn't it behoove them to have maybe a therapist there and work through some of that mm. stuff too while trying to find love? Mm, I would love that's what normal people are doing. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Most definitely, if you really want, like, if you're the showrunner and you really want there to be love and you want to show that your method is working, why not ensure that you have professionals to do, to make that happen? Because I don't get why they get to a point most definitely within that show where they're almost at their wedding and they haven't had marriage counseling like that's not making sense to me <laughs> like none at all and I, I feel like in some states you have to have marriage counseling just so you can get married so what are we doing <laughs> like, yeah and I think also being mindful of the the therapist that you're talking to for marriage counseling too mm. so that plays a big part it does. It does. Oh God, I, I, I truly, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I can't say I get triggered watching those shows, but I truly do worry about those people very often. Uh, whenever I am engaging in that kind of content, because I, I'm just like, one, I do hope that they become, they find happiness. I really want that for every single person on there, but it's just in the back of my head, I always question their intentions. And I hate that um, because we, the reality TV space has become so phony. Uh, most definitely when it comes to these dating shows that it's just like, well, what's the purpose? Like I think of that show, uh, Too Hot to Handle. It's, it's hilarious to watch uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a show of extremely attractive people. That's how they market it, actually. Uh, extremely attractive people being trapped on an island, um, being forced not to touch each other. So uh, I think that's Too Hot to Handle. Too, um, yeah, something like that. But yeah. With that show, they have some people on the island, they're beautiful and all this other stuff. And um, by uh, forcing them not to engage in sexual acts, even kissing, um, they hope to bridge like connections with the, uh, each other to like actually um, develop some kind of romantic relationship. But I'm also like, that's an interesting take, but is not giving healthy relationship at the end of the day because uh, in, a, in a way it's like we're forcing people to fall in love and seeing if it will last and seeing if it's actually true love uh, and I know they might have been told something uh, like they know exactly what show they're going on because again 
this TV shit is very phony. So I don't know what those conversations oh. are on the other side, but it's, it's like, if I'm told that I'm going to an island of extremely beautiful people to fuck them uh, throughout the entire time, I'm fucking on the first night. I'm going to be having sex as soon as we get there. And it's not where we're going to wait until tonight when the sun goes down and all this other stuff to like get shit started up. No, I'm already here. I see that you're beautiful. I find you attractive. And what's up? You find me cute? Let's go to the bathroom. Let's go to the bedroom. Bitch, we're fucking. Like, that's that's what we're doing. And once we're done and we see somebody else that's attractive too, we can have a threesome. We can have a foursome. We can have a whole ass orgy. Because look, what we're not going to do is that like we're not going to be fucking here (laughs) so like it it, it just gives so much phoniness to me like they get surprised that they're on this show and all this other shit and it's just like i don't yeah it's really a lot more it seems to me for the dramatics like these are all i i look at it now when i see dating shows like this and i'm like Y'all are all actors playing a part in a show. Like, it's not y'all are looking for love, you know, or whatever it is. We're actors. We have to play this part. Producers may have already told. Because y'all y'all got to be crazy if y'all think that the producers are not telling them stuff behind the scenes. I'm like, oh, maybe you should uh, do this a little bit more. Or so-and-so said this about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're being pushed to to act on a scene, and that's really what it is. Mm. Oh, that's that reminds me of that um, of season four of um, what was it? Um, oh, what's that show? Was it season four? Um, Dear white people, because they um, they portrayed uh, Coco on that television show, uh, and how they were like speaking uh like double speaking and behind the scenes to make them uh her and muffy um go after each other but yeah mm-hmm. I, I see like a lot of that happening in a lot of these reality tv shows because otherwise it's like it's ridiculousness and, like, I, and I get it like y'all feel like it will be too boring if it was all really about love so i i mean i i could get that to an extent but we it is straight to me it feels like it's straight too far away from its core that it's like is this even a love show Mm -hmm. you know yeah and i know because the the marketing ploy is drama i get that but people always make that argument that oh people love drama so we have to push drama no people consume the content that they want to consume you can have a show without all this romantic drama shit like all this fiery arguments and all this other stuff you can have a great show without that and it's still bring you revenue you just have to choose to do that you can change whatever narrative you want within the dating sphere if you want if you choose to do so like you can add these plus size bodies you can add these individuals with disabilities you can add these different facets of life have a lot more normal people on the show or even those who are um you know average looking people on the show like the fact that on movie sets when it comes to casting people they will like most of them for extras they will identify oh this person looks very average to the point that you can uh, you won't notice that they're there whenever they hit the scene so we're going to put them in this in this space and that happens throughout life like that happens in multiple movies you don't really notice anybody that's in the background because they are focusing on average looking people versus those people who will be the most attractive which is why they have these extremely beautiful people who are your actors actresses and all those other great things so like if we can identify that and we know that's a thing why can't we do that in tv shows well like dating shows Right. And I guess maybe it feels too much to have like all of the people look average or are, you know, different looking. But can we at least get three or four plus size babes? Like, geez. Mm. Okay. Three? 
<laughs> that 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 are shaped differently that don't just because the thing is y'all get these plus size babes i know we just talked about it but it's like ashley graham is plus size i yes sure whatever she has a flat stomach and a big head like it's like most average plus size people have a belly and even the plus size guys like all of the guys on the shows are like freaking six packs like mm. i like a thick boy mm, yes I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Even if you have to just make a series by itself of plus size people dating each other, that will be a start. But that's also pushing a certain narrative that, oh, you um, plus size people can only find love with each other. And that's also not true. Like, just be open to, like, there are so many things that they can do if they really wanted to include plus size people. Like just that ideal itself with just plus size people who enjoy the uh, presence of other plus size people. You can also have a, ch- a show called Chasers. And we know Ooh. what that's going to be about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to watch it. Very and, <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to watch it. I will enjoy it. I will truly enjoy it. But that's also going to be showing these different body types. And you don't just need to have um, just um, chub men, chub women. You can have a variety of people on there who uh, who's plus size. And we're not talking about... Um, the modelesque chub we talking about you got rolls on your belly no dad buys allowed in this mm-hmm. we we need the rolls we need the titties that bounce if you want to lift it up you can you can put it on your shoulder if you need to <laughs> I, that's what i'm talking about when i say i need to see some plus size up up in this bitch invite vernon on this show i'm here for it thank you i'm here right right <laughs> like let's go let's let's get it going like the show that you can still be sexy. Like, I loved, even though this is not a reality TV show, well, love show, the that season of, um, what was it? I think it was season two of Legendary, when they had Tonka on there, and um, they were just out here doing the category body, and I was like, I love that for you, because one, you are gorgeous, you are beautiful, and I love your thickness. Yes, you better do this for mm-hmm. the big guys, the big gals, the big girls, okay? You better do it for us all, and I love to see it, and it's like this: these kind of spaces help other people feel like they can be sexy, too. Like, yeah. you don't have to just be like, well, not only feel sexy but feel loved and by not allowing uh, plus size people people with disability into these spaces of finding love uh, and validating their type of love you're uh, perpetually you're you're sending that message that they're not worthy on a regular basis right because like outside of the dating shows like even on regular tv shows there's still not enough representation of plus size and even the ones that are on plus that have plus size is still like the same trope Mm -hmm. um and you know i love insecure it's a great show but kelly definitely had the same trope as every other plus size girl which is this chaotic everywhere overly sexual plus size girl Mm. you know who never really had any boy issues didn't really talk about boys like as deep as like molly or Issa did you know so or always always had boy problems if there was one yeah like that that's one of the things that stood out to me in insecure i'm just like so why is it that kelly does not have a healthy relationship like what are we doing like why is it that it's always a fuck buddy and never a, a actual man like what are we doing here granted i love kelly as a character because kelly and me like we spoke a language and i was like bitch yes i'm with you on oh, all yeah. things but at the same time when it came to romance um kelly's the what is it for forever a bridesmaid never the um, bride is that the saying? 
that's the that's essentially mm-hmm. what was going on with Kelly. And I was like, why why are we doing this? Like, why can Kelly not be in a, a, a actual sustainable relationship? And I still want to know the drama between Kelly and Issa's brother. Like, we that's unresolved issue. And I'm starting to feel a yeah, trauma response. We need to go. We need yeah. I, it's trauma at this point. I can't get that out of my head. Insecurity caused my PTSD. I need to know this so I can heal. Okay, Issa, <laughs> answer these questions. <laughs> What's the beef about? Right. But, anyways, but yeah, like it's on Netflix now. It is. Yeah. Oh shit! I rewatch. I love to give Issa her coins. So. Right, I've been with Issa since YouTube. So. Right, like, but yeah, that that trope is. It's, it's tired. It is really tired. Love Natasha Rothwell. I truly do. Because gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. Gorgeous. And she played the role so very well. And I know she was also writing for Kelly, too. Yeah, yeah I think the last season she wrote a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. But it's like, can we can we get some happiness in plus size people's lives? Please. Like, everybody goes through this shit everybody i know that like the same sh- uh, shit that kelly was going through a lot of other people's going through too but it doesn't have to always be the plus size bitch that's all i'm saying let her be right because it kind of gives this idea that people just want to fuck us and don't want to actually want to be with us and that's not always that's not true at all Mm-mm. um so yeah or if you i don't know if you've seen the movie blackening oh yes the plus size girl there is still that kind of chaotic energy thing trope so Mm, right I didn't didn't have a partner either remember the other people were like I didn't think about that but you are so fucking right oh how did I miss that wow yeah yeah everybody was there pretty much had a boo thing well of course uh uh one old dude the one who had the attitude, which I love, but that's another thing. Why did the gay man have to just be the one with all the attitude and also the voice of reason within all this shit? Because you know, heterosexuals, right. but <laughs> which I think they did make a play on. But like, why? She she should have her man there. Like, again. <sighs> well. Is there anything else that you would like to uh, release as it relates to reality TV and um, these love love fighting shows and whatnot? Mm, I don't have anything. Yeah, no, I don't have anything else to say about it. I think we said quite a bit <laughs> about it. <laughs> Add more plus size girlies, okay? Yes, yes. <laughs> Look, anybody who's out there listening to this episode and they have other things that they want to rant about as it relates to this topic, go ahead and put that in the comments. Put that wherever you find this podcast and it gives you the opportunity to uh, comment, add that shit. I will read it if I can. Um, And also give this podcast five stars and rate it. Don't don't mention anything about this episode in that um, ratings. Just just say that you love the show. That's all you need to do. Thank you so much. I love y'all. But, Sharita, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. Of course. Is there anything else that you would like to share unrelated to what we talked about? No, that's it. That's it. Well, to the audience out there, thank you all so much for listening to the Holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful, you are worthy of happiness and joy, you are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.